Hello guys, uh, today's lecture is uh, for those uh, who are going to study economics for the first time. And uh, the very first lesson which is given to them is uh, about the subject matter of economics itself, meaning uh, the meaning of economics and microeconomics and macroeconomics. And they are taught that the word economics uh, is derived from a Greek word uh, economia. That means uh, management of family and then uh, they are uh, taught the definition given by uh, Adam Smith that economics is the study of nature and causes of wealth of uh, the nation. And then uh, the topics uh, that are there in the book uh, that you initially only glance at. Uh, they are, uh, for example, uh, the demand, utility, national income, public budget, etc., etc. And any inquisitive mind would wonder if there is a connect between the definition and the topics that are contained. On the one hand, in the connecting thread uh, between the topics that are listed, uh, the another uh, question uh, that comes to one if this question comes to your mind it's a very healthy sign as a student so my uh, purpose for today's lecture is to um, uh, resolve this mystery as to why it is important to give you the definition of uh, economics given by uh, adam smith and that is economics is the study of nature and causes of uh, wealth of nation um, and uh, uh, and then the other definitions given by uh, other economists. Uh, there are plenty of them, but uh, I will uh, concentrate only on few definitions and uh, stop at the definition which envelops um, most of the things uh, that are uh, covered under economics. Though I should uh, uh, make this uh, disclaimer. Uh, this is my judgment that there could hardly be a definition leave aside economics for any subject that would envelop each and everything that is covered under the subject but that is the different debate so if a definition covers um, 80 or 90 percent of what is studied in the subject that definition should be considered to be uh, the most appropriate one Smith's definition does not fit this slot but then why Smith's definition is important? For this, you will have to go into the background or uh, uh, prevailing then. Economics as discipline did not exist when Smith has published his Wealth of Nation in, um, let me, Wealth of Nation. Wealth of Nation is not complete title of his book. Complete title of his book is An Inquiry into the Nature and Causes of Wealth of Nation. This is the complete topic. So I should put this. This is the title of the book that was published in 1776. Now this was this is the date I should call it when economics as a formal discipline uh, began to be uh, recognized. So economics starts off its journey from this uh, publication of Wealth of Nation, although there existed the uh, very popular uh, doctrines full of economic content and explanations about the, the thing that is physiocrats, mercantilism and there could be others because economic content <laughs> you could find even in the uh, writings of the ancient authors, but I will not go into that. So, uh, but at that time, when Smith uh, came on the scene, the two powerful doctrines that were still existing, though uh, they were losing, I mean, at least one of them, that is mercantilism, that was losing its uh, relevance uh, fast because of the changing circumstances. But the uh, focus of all the thinkers, whether they were physiocrats or mercantilists, was on as to what is the source of value. Because once you recognize as to what causes value, you could devise ways through which nation can prosper. So, pr 
prosperity of the nation could be the priority or could be the focus implicit in that could be that if nation uh, will prosper naturally the people living in the nation will also uh, become uh, better off uh, but definition does not say so so Smith's definition has to be viewed in this context that the quest was for the source of knowledge that mercantilist a very powerful doctrine or uh, mercantilism mercantilist thought to be in trade that it is because of trade that value gets generated that is the export surplus through which you accumulate more and more bullions and through which the nation becomes stronger so it was basically trade um, that is the cause of value physiocrats found it to be in production mercantilist uh, continued to influence the uh, polity uh, for almost two centuries uh, from uh, the 15th century to the uh, sorry from the 16th century to the um, uh, 18th century physiocrats do enjoyed a very short span but they gave um, um, more uh, systematic uh, analytical tools but they thought uh, the value uh, consists of or value lies in production and that too in only one sector which is agriculture agricultural production okay um, manufacturing sector was sterile uh, trade was necessary evil according to uh, physiocrats but i will not go into the details of all these things uh, i just refer to them only because i wanted to put the matter in context in which smith came out with his definition of uh, what is basically the economics and smith found this value to be in labor so labor theory of value that remained popular for almost the next century uh, that goods have value because certain amount of labor uh, is exercised on them in other words value is because of the labor embodiment in the goods and it is because of this belief that smith had um, advocated or Smith had identified the ways as to how this value could be enhanced through division of labor uh, and uh, how the capital accumulation would take place etc etc so uh, you have to view the definition of economics given by Adam Smith in this context that is why I took four or five minutes explaining the circumstances the next important definition that I will dwell on uh, is uh, the one given uh, a little over 100 years after Smith's uh, definition and that was the, the definition uh, given by uh, Alfred Marshall another big shot in economics uh, who um, has uh, revolutionized basically the microeconomic theory uh, and this distinction basically uh, was not uh, there during uh, Smith's time uh, that uh, what is microeconomics and what is macroeconomics because microeconomics content did not exist uh, then now what marshall said was that economics is the study of man in the ordinary business of life it inquires how he gets his income and how he spends it this is significant that economics basically studies as to how the people are engaged how they are earning their income and how they are spending it so the people or the man uh, that was not the focus it came into focus and for the first time um, the question of equilibrium as to uh, how the equilibrium price would be set up in the market where the consumer will be uh, in equilibrium um, of uh, when he spends money what he consumes and what he spends on that and that is uh, the uh, you probably uh, will study and I will also um, have uh, the lecture on these topics like the marginal utility uh, theory and uh, the uh, this uh, uh, determination of equilibrium price in the market so Marshall definition is significant from this point but still one thing was seriously amiss and that is the question of scarcity that is scarcity 
which is at the core of all the uh, economic uh, content okay and uh, this has been brought into uh, focus by uh, another uh, economist whose name was uh, robbins in this definition of uh, robbins that i am going to uh, tell you uh, came about uh, 50 years after marshall's definition and this definition is most popular till date this definition appears to be more uh, compact and this definition reads as economics is a science which studies human behavior as a relationship between ends and scarce means that have alternative uses this is significant that the good in question or the means in question has the alternative uses and they are scarce also so you have to make most out of that that was the uh, core of uh, this definition and that is basically the that is precisely the core of the entire uh, economics uh, uh, though there was the definition after robbins also and there are many definitions but one more definition which is uh, popular because that incorporates uh, many more um, uh, developments uh, that uh, uh, were there in the subject uh, that is uh, basically uh, the growth element, uh, time element, uh, the uh, allocation of resources, etc. So, Paul Samuelson, um, another great uh, Paul Samuelson. Uh, he come out with his definition like uh, economics is the study of how people and society end up choosing with or without use of money. He has brought this uh, into question that means the money started playing a very significant role by that time. To employ scarce productive resources that could have alternative uses. Up to this point there is a little difference between um, uh, the definition uh, given by Robbins and that of Adam Smith. But he proceeds on to uh, say uh, to produce various commodities over time and distributing them for consumption now or in future. So there was clearly a distinction between today and future that means he was talking about um, the growth or uh, the um, uh, preference between uh, present and the future. Okay. So, among various persons or group in society, it analyzes the cost and benefits of improving uh, pattern of resource allocation. So, this is the uh, definition of Samuelson, but I would not uh, uh, like to um, uh, strike a terror in your mind by giving you uh, such a large definition. If you uh, just understand the core of what uh, Robbins had suggested, that is basically the core of uh, economics that is economics is basically the economics is basically the study of as to how the people exercise their choices when they are confronted uh, with a situation where they have the scarce resources that have uh, the varied uh, uses so how to put these resources um, into uh, the uses and how to divide up these resources into uh, various uh, things uh, so as to derive the maximum benefit out of it. So that is basically the core of uh, economics. So uh, uh, friends uh, you should not uh, uh, confuse by uh, as to whether uh, what Smith was saying uh, gets connected to uh, your uh, other topics that is important because economics uh, started its journey from uh, that uh, and uh, later uh, you have uh, come to have the definition uh, that covers uh, almost uh, i mean i should say 90 percent of the things that are studied uh, in economics uh, further uh, this economic theory economic theory is basically uh, the um, uh, presenting the complex uh, things complex reality in a, a simplistic uh, form this economic th uh, theory um, uh, is divided into two categories one is microeconomics and another one is macroeconomics and i'm sure you must be 
I'm well interested in uh, this distinction between microeconomics and macroeconomics, but I defer this, uh, this uh, discussion uh, for the next lecture. Thank you very much.